and I can write screenplays, I'd be really, really famous. <laughs> I really would. It was an amazing neighborhood. I learned so much. It was so comical. It was just such a great place to grow up. Um, I, I grew up in the shadow of Veteran Stadium, so that was my backyard. I snuck into 7,000 Eagles games and Phillies games over the years. I've been thrown out of several as a kid. Uh, we rode our bikes up the ramps, we rode our bikes down the ramps. Um, you know, it was in that era, it was the early 80s yeah. where we left the house at 9 a.m. and we came back at, you know, when, when it was dark and we did whatever we wanted, wherever we wanted, and played sports all day long. It was, it was great. Were you uh, ever you know, scared you know, in the area or was it you know, pretty safe when you grew up? Um, by today's standards, it no, it wasn't safe. It, it's kind of, it's, it's interesting. It wasn't safe as, as people would think of safe today with no confrontations and no violence and no aggressiveness. It was a very aggressive neighborhood. However, on the other hand, I couldn't walk down the street without 50 eyeballs on me from my neighbors. So my mom or dad would get a call from anyone within a 10 block radius if they saw me doing something wrong or they saw me in trouble. So on one hand, it was extremely safe because we knew every neighbor, hundreds of people, very tight-knit tight knit, tight -knit uh, neighborhood. But on the other hand, it wasn't safe and, and like by today's standards. It was a really aggressive uh, neighborhood, which, which helped build you know, grit and character. And What did you learn from that? Um, I learned a lot. You know, I, I learned a lot about myself now as an adult looking back, you know? So just looking back at, you know, some of the things that happened and the way we were raised, I, now, now I learned the lessons. I didn't know them then, but the lessons took 5, 10, 15, 20 years, um, you know, to come to fruition. But, uh, you know, I learned how to have a chip on my shoulder and keep it and use it in a productive way, right? I learned how to, you know, generate uh, energy from it. And I learned how to be a, a you know, good person. I, I really learned how to be a good person in a lot of unusual ways. Built some definitely probably some versatility yeah. from what you grew up with. Overcoming versatility. Um, you know, I learned a lot about myself, which I think is uh, it's a very understated success law, right? You know, know, know thyself. I, mean, I know you, yeah. you're a big fan of that. Uh, but learning who you are over time is really, and how fast you can learn who you are and get comfortable with who you are, is directly proportionate to how far you can go. And how fast you can go. Yeah, self awareness is a very key part of life. It takes us a while to figure that part out. But the, what you're good at, what you're not good at, how to change, how to get past it. Yeah. Sports? Did you play sports? What did you do? Played sports, every sport, all day long, every day. You know, thought I was the greatest. Like? Learned that I really stunk as I got older and really started <laughs> to compete. <laughs> but, uh, you know, you, you uh, our neighborhood, we were all undersized generally speaking but super aggressive so as we traveled and played other teams in in the suburbs in the region in the state we were half their size but we always won so we were the neighborhood was always very good in sports uh, some of my greatest defeats and failures were in sports when i started to reach that age where your dreams start to get crushed right and yeah. i watch my kids going through that now they're not at that point yet but yeah. they will be yeah. Uh, maybe in six years when they don't make the NBA, yeah. you know, when, when my 11 year old kid thinks he's, he's going to be in the NBA, he may, but chances are yeah. he won't. Yeah. And that's a, that's such a great lesson. Like you got to taste yeah. defeat and failure yeah. and, and build on it. And that stuff, you know, builds character. Yeah. But I was, I think I, I think I was good what in sport? baseball, baseball. Was, my, was my sport. And one of my greatest failures was when I got hit by a car when I was 12 and I broke my leg and three places. I lost all, I was, I uh, lost all the skin on my foot. I had a couple down years in, in baseball. This was in high, approaching high school. And I remember getting me and all my, my South Philly buddies, a group of us went to Central High. Um, so we kind of went in a different direction. The whole neighborhood went to one of two schools. Uh, a pack of us, a small pack of us, five or six went to Central High um, up in North Philly, which was, you know, pretty good, pretty good high school. But I was coming off that injury and I didn't make the JV baseball team and I was crushed and embarrassed. Like I went back to the neighborhood. I was the only guy that didn't make it. Uh, it was terrible. It was terrible. And that was just, you know, another, another what lesson. What did you take away from that as, as 
it's been some very similar crunches on the last few years. My opinion on that. What's, what's your take out of that? A lot. Big lesson was I counted on my perceived talent because yep. I always was good enough to make all the teams we ever played on and all the travel teams. Uh, I didn't work hard enough off of that injury. I just thought I was going to coast in on talent. Got cut, but I came back the next year. And I batted cleanup uh, for JV, made it to varsity pretty fast. And I was never a cleanup hitter in, in our neighborhood. You know, I wasn't the, the best hitter on the team ever. But coming off of that, that little, that little setback yeah. got me to a place the next year, which was, was pretty exciting. And I didn't make the pros, by the way. Oh, no, you missed out, day. Jess? Yeah. A lot of good baseball players down there, man. Meet so many of you guys from South Philly. Yeah. Good baseball players. A lot of pros from our yeah. neighborhood, yeah. A lot of Michael Koploff and a lot, a lot of guys. Yeah. What would you, would you, if you did it again, have you ever wanted to live in the suburbs? And if you, you know, you live in the city now. Never had any desire as a kid. To grow, uh, to grow up in the suburbs, to live in the suburbs. Yeah, when somebody had a pool and we visited it, it was the greatest <laughs> thing in the world, but we didn't even know that world really existed, that lifestyle existed. Yeah. So no. And even as an adult, sure, everyone like thinks yeah. about it every once in a while, but I'm not at that place yet in my life. In life, many times you want what you don't have, right? Yeah. And then sometimes you get it, like, yeah, like, every, like not everybody, like a lot of people right now are like moving from the city to the burbs. They're like, uh -huh. so what's going to happen? I'm like, guys, we're going to get from the burbs. They're gonna love the birds for a while. They're gonna get bored and back. Yeah. Just like the shore definitely thing right now, right by shore house there and realize it's great, but you know, I don't have to travel. I don't want to go to the same shore house the rest of my life. Right. I think it's just gonna be a big issue. Yeah. So played sports, you didn't make major league baseball. Um, you learned a lot. Um, you had fun, you have no regrets living in the city. Take me through like your teenage years, like job wise, you know, twenties, like take, take me through like what did you do? Did you have a job? Did you not have a job? Tell me what you did. Yeah, teenage years in the city. We, we had a lot of fun, uh, tons of fun. I did work. I, I scrapped. I worked. I picked up jobs all over the place. My first job was waving the flag at at, at the parking lot at the stadium. Five bucks an hour, three hours a night, every home Phillies game throughout the summer, every concert. It was a blast. Just hanging out in the parking lot as you know, twelve year old or thirteen year old. Okay. Awesome cash too. It was fifteen bucks cash a night which, you know, sometimes the Phillies were home 10 nights in a row. That was, that was a lot of money uh, for a 12-year-old. Um, and it was so, so much fun. That was probably my first real job, not like hustle, but a real job. And even that was kind of like a, okay. a guy from the neighborhood had a deal worked out with some of the parking lots across the street from the vet parking lot. And uh, when their business closed at night, he came in, operated the, the parking lots, all cash business, hired a few kids from the neighborhood to wave the flags. It was so, it was great. I love it was it. great. It shows our age. Mom is four twenty five minimum wage. And you said you make five bucks. Yeah. It shows, yeah. Five it bucks. just shows yeah. our age, what we used to make. <laughs> right. So what else? Any other fun jobs you did? Um, as a teenager, here and there. That was my primary gig for a few years. Did it wasn't college. Didn't go to college. Well, I attempted to go. I did I went to Westchester for a semester. And then from there, that's where my world really opened up and took me to a lot of different places. I, uh, I got into school. It wasn't for me. I knew going in it wasn't for me. I went. I made my parents happy. Just gave it a try. Yeah. And then funny thing is, I met my roommate in college, got recruited. Now, I guess we're 18 yep. at the time. My friend from college gets recruited into multi-level marketing. Right, you know, like an Amway type yeah. company. It wasn't Amway, but it was a company structured like that, right? Where you sold the product, you kept a lion's share of the money. The more you sold, the more you made. And if you got people involved with you and you built the sales team, you made an override off of everything they sold. I was like, I'm in, man. It was my calling, dude. <laughs> I was like, Dad, I'm done with school. This is like first semester. <laughs> I left, I got into that business. We started selling um, water treatment set, uh, units for under the for sink, houses, yeah, awesome. for the house. And that was just one product line. They had like 10 product lines. And here I am in the suit that didn't fit. I was 18, so I had long curly hair in the back. I had like a mullet thing going on. I tried to grow long hair. I was, you know, I was in the classic rock, you know, at that time. But I cut that off. And uh, I went to work, and I'm in this suit. And we would run ads in the paper, and we would bring people in for a job interview, but it was a group interview. 
They didn't know that coming in. So they would come in, fill the room, and they'd be looking around like, what's going on here? And I'm expecting, you know, Bob, John, and, and, and you know, Jeremy. I'd find them. I'd introduce myself, 18-year-old kid in a suit and zits. Um, and they're, like, leaving their law firm. Or they're, like, you know, they're an engineer. They're looking for something new. And that was my first real sales job where I now had to circle up with them like this, pitch them on what they were about to see. Hey, this is the way it's going to work. This isn't your normal job interview. We're all going to sit down. We're going to see a presentation. Then we're going to talk. And they're like, oh, my God. Okay. And, and that was the business. What was the percentages? So let's like, say 10 people came in. What was, what was the Negative one. It was probably <laughs> one out of uh, – I'd probably have to meet with 25 people to get one person to take the next step, right? And that next step was a business opportunity. It wasn't a job. Like I, my, that wasn't a job. It was a business opportunity. It was, hey. You can work with us and sell our products and make 60% profit, or you can sell the products and build a sales team and make your profits on your sales, but make a 20% return on, on the sales team you built. And there were people in this business who had sales teams of 700 people, and they were making major, major money. And it just worked. It just made sense to me. Yeah. And these people, I look back on it, it was just tremendous. I learned so much. I was 18 to 20. Started in Philly, um, owners of the company broke up, split up all over the country. I followed one down to Dallas, Texas, which I'll tell you about in a wow. second. Yeah. So, um, so it was these group of people that I got tied in with. They were very. Here's how I explain them now as an adult. It was a very dynamic group of people, a very talented, driven, dynamic group of lunatics, uh, sales driven from other industries who've gotten into this business. They were business owners, they were um, entrepreneurs, and they got into this business. And I was around these people for two years, and it was unbelievable because they taught me how to sell, yeah. taught me about business in a very unconventional way. I learned how to just fail and fail and fail and fail. I mean, you know, damn, I, I, I failed a lot. I remember calling home in, in tears one night, you know, uh, from Dallas. So. One of the owners said, I'm leaving. The owners went their separate ways. We went down to Dallas and started a new company. He said, I want to take you with me. I was like, let's go. Uh, at the time, I thought he was a billionaire. Yeah. Um, he was very successful and the greatest sales person I probably have met to date. And he did teach me how to sell. Uh, taught me a lot of things, uh, but he taught me how to sell. And I, I was with him for almost two years. The business failed. I failed out of the business, but I still stayed around him for a while. I drove his kids to, I babysit his kids. I drive, drove him to the airport for when he went to um, a business meeting in another state. I watched his house. I house sat, and I was around this successful millionaire for you know a good bit of time. Yeah. And and you know by today's standards, I don't even know what he was worth. Right. He had a big house. He lived next to Tony Dorsett in Dallas. Probably blowing his cover. I don't think anybody sees this, but um, in that time I spent, just another time frame of, of you know lessons I learned. I learned a lot. People back in the neighborhood where I grew up, they thought I was in a cult. Hey, every time they, I'd be back in town for a few days, how's the cult? You know, you're in. A, I heard you in a cult. You know, so it was a big, it was a big joke. It was tough. You know, it was, yeah. it was hard. Like, I didn't, I didn't have a lot of uh, support other than you know my my parents. But um, I look back on that two-year period, doing it, learning, and then failing, and then figuring out. First year I was in Dallas, I was in the business. Then I failed. That next year was like... Why do you think you failed? Um, why did I fail? I probably, I guess it had part to do with, with the model. It wasn't the best, the best model. Um, I was 18. I was, my knowledge base was really limited. Uh, I made up for that with, with grit and hard work, but wasn't enough to make it at the level I needed to make it and wanted to make it. Um, that's the first two things that, that popped into my mind. So you leave the water treatment business, yeah. right? Water yep. filter business. Yep. And then you hang out with this rich man. And then what happens next? And by the way, when we were, doing, when we were in that business, they also owned a training company. So I traveled around to different cities in that year for three-day training sessions 
three-day uh, marketing and sales training sessions, which were a major production uh, put on by them, which were phenomenal. So it was another way I learned how to sell and I learned, oh, wow. learned about business, which was really cool. I just thought of that. Um, so what was your question? Where did I so go from there? So what do you have that? How old are you? At that point, I'm 18. Now I'm 19. So I'm in Dallas from 19, 20, right before I turned 21. I think I came back that summer. And then I always knew I'd come back. And I always knew I'd get into real estate. Okay? Partially because my dad was a realtor in the 70s and 80s. Who did he work for? Uh, he was a sales manager at DeGenero Century 21 down in, in South Philly yeah. on Broad Street, yeah. another firm before that. Um, and I remember my dad working FISBOs and me writing down the FISBO numbers for him and him stopping the car and getting out. Where, dad, where are you going? He's running up to a door and getting a, uh, a phone number. And, uh, you know, I was always, that was always part of my childhood for a while. Yeah. Um, and my dad eventually shifted and got into commercial appraisals. Um, and that became his thing. But uh, when I came back from Dallas, I kind of worked with him for a few months until I figured out what the heck I wanted to do. And then he introduced me or made the suggestion that I go find Mike McCann. Oh, I That's did not know that. Out. It gets a little weirder. Mike McCann's, one of Mike's first deals in the business, my dad was the listing agent. Mike was the buyer's agent. Wow. And Mike tells the story all the time. The, the brokers would never let Mike into South Philly because he wasn't part of that group. And the Center City brokers wouldn't let Mike into Center City because he wasn't part of that group. Mike was a little bit of a, you know, an outcast trying to get into the biz. And he says he never forgets. He called my dad on a listing and my dad treated him so well. Right? My dad, uh, all, you know, um, just shuffled him in and said, yeah, hey, look, this is what it is. And by the way, it's a 7% commission. You know, I hope you sell it. And Mike tells that story all the time. Like he never forgot that. And they did a deal together, 7% commission. Wow. And then when I said, Dad, I'm, I'm getting into this business. It makes sense. I tried to decide if I wanted to go residential or commercial. So I took a couple interviews with commercial firms, some of the bigger ones at the time, Smith Mac and maybe Cushman Wakefield or CBRE. And I said to myself, I can't really leverage anything I learned in that business. It's so corporate. Like I can't. I can't maximize or I can't benefit from all the re relationships I have in the neighborhood you know, and all the relationships I've built. So I went towards residential, of course. And uh, my dad said, look, if you're going to do that, call Mike McCann. He's a great guy. He's dominating the market. Like, why would you go with anyone else? And that was sage advice. Wow. Um, and that's how that Might was the be beginning of the journey. I don't know what else your dad gives advice to give your life, but that's yeah. that would be a top, top five list. Yeah, no, he gave me a lot, a lot of good advice. So then now you, what happened? Did you, did you meet Mike? I call Mike. I'm like, hey, I'm Jim. I said, let's meet. Uh, or no, actually, rewind. I call the office, and I don't get through to Mike, and I get the sales manager, iconic May Acker, um, who is the mother of Lauren Acker, who's on our McCann team, yeah. and hired me into the business and many, many, many others. Um, and I meet with May first, and I'll never forget it. It was an unbelievable inter, uh, interview, and she's just the funniest and the most charismatic and amazing person. And I remember saying, look, she's like, you're not going to be driving a Porsche. You're one, buddy. You know, it's just it's tough business, 100% commissions. I said, May, I've been doing 100% commissions since I was 18. And she's like, okay, whatever. So I leave, and I find out that she calls Mike next, and she says, hey, Mike, I know you're looking for you know, one of your first agents. I think you got to meet this kid. And she sets up the meeting. And at the time, luckily, you know, timing's everything. Mike was just really starting to build a team. Yeah, this is end of 99. This is 1999. Yeah, he's just starting to take off. He had one or two assistants. He had one other agent. I think it was his first agent. And then I'm coming into the picture. And I go and I, I meet with Mike. May sets it up. I go meet with Mike. I remember like it was yesterday. It's funny, at the time I was 22, 21, I was 21, and man, I was like 4% body fat, I was like in great shape, I had muscles, and, and Mike, at 44, I was 29, 40, he was just turning 40, Mike was a little soft, a little bit of a belly, 
you know, he was like your typical 40 year old yeah. guy with kids grinding out a job. I remember that. I'm bringing that up because fast forward. Now I'm the one that's soft at 44. <laughs> and Mike's in great shape and doing push ups and low body right. fat. And yeah, just something I always remember. Oh, it works. But uh, I went in and met with him. I remember the whole interview who was there. He was running around like his normal self, just, you know, high energy. And we hit it off, and the rest is history. So now you become, you know, working with Mike. Interesting. You both didn't go to college. Mm -hmm. You you sold um, a product that was straight commission. He sold vacuum straight commission. So we had a few, right? Yep. Now you meet each other and you start working together. What were some of your key takeaways that you guys took away from each other or brought you guys between the advice that one person had to separate? I mean, you know, where do I begin? One, so important to have a mentor, right? And just surround yourself with the best. Just being around the best makes you better, right? It's a phenomenon in life. You know, riding pine and sit, sitting on the bench next to Michael Jordan for years, you're going to be a better competitor. You're going to be a better player. Being Tiger Woods' caddy, you're going to be a better a golfer, you know? Um, so that was something I started to learn early. Like, oh, wow, this is pretty great. Like, I have Mike at my side. There's a lot there. Um, also, like, in business, like, I, for, for forever, I was uh, an agent on Mike's team, and it's grown into more. Um, but it's funny how when you work with someone, to work with your opposite is really interesting, and a really great strategy is what I learned, Right. If you're looking to bring someone into your world, into your business, take the business to the next level, it's good to have the opposite, right? And you know Mike and you know and yep. you know myself are very, very opposite. Yep. And we complement each other uh, very well. So in the early years, we complemented each other well on listing appointments and getting business and meeting with people and presenting, right? Uh, because he has one personality and I have a future one, like future one appointments together? Oh yeah. Yeah, for, for a long time. And then and then in the early years, I'm on the buyer side of a sale. Mike's on the seller side. I don't want to say hundreds of times because that's probably high, but dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens of times over the years, Mike was on the listing side. I was on the buyer side. We would negotiate a deal and communicate through a deal and work through problems. So, you know, we're on the opposite side of the deal. But that interaction was yeah. such a, a lesson yeah. for so many years, and even still today. So, got a lot. How many years has it been you guys have been together now? 23. Yeah. 23. How many times do you get people to try to recruit you again? All the time. Yeah. Even at a, at a young age. Yeah. But uh, What keeps you together? Uh, one plus one equals three. You know, that, that, that's our saying, you know. Mike can go on and do amazing things without me and, and I like to think I can do some things you know without him but together we go further you know there's that saying if you want to go fast go by yourself if you want to go far go with other people right it's one of my favorite sayings Mike is unique as a group of monopolists that make this thing run, run so universal yeah. I don't really know I don't know if there's anybody in the group that would say he runs it well a lot of times people some people want to do it I have no, I don't know about you, I have no desire to do something with you. Right. I appreciate the stuff that you guys do mm-hmm. and how you do it. So it's interesting to watch you two, how you play off each other and how you guys make the group make this better for everybody and then you bring the other side, you bring this side. Yeah. And now you're yeah. taking that with team and now you're doing it in brokerages. Yeah. So let's talk about that. You built this big sales team. The sales team is probably do what, $700 million this year, something in that range? Yeah, maybe. Right? Maybe. Yeah, maybe. We're, 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 our goal is really $500 um thousand grand down what do you think your goal is we'll be close we'll be close 500 is not 7,000 yeah 500 yeah expansion too or is that thing together yeah everything together so okay that's a big number right yeah big big number so now what taking you through like i don't know what the show skills obviously partners is the broker deal once the broker deal is done what what's your what gets you anyway gets you excited is you know seeing people develop and see people grow what's the biggest takeaways you're taking Away from investing in your broker deal. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, the funny thing is, like, I gave you a brief snapshot of my history. Looking back on it, I always 
was with very impressive people, even from a young age. I didn't know it at the time, but I got lucky, um, and I took advantage of a couple of opportunities along the way, and I was around some dynamic, smart people who thought other ways um, my whole career, and even before my career, right? So, and then I like, if I read something, if I watch something, it's in like the self-help category. Like yeah. I, I'm, I'm a little bit of a nerd with that stuff. I know you are too. Yeah. We read all the same books. Like I'll, I'll never read a fantasy. I'll never read a book with a dragon on the front. Like it just doesn't, I doesn't do it for me. I like, my, the closest I'll get is somebody's autobiography, yeah. right? I love that as well. So doing and being around those type of people, reading about those people, um, you know, as I got to this age or, you know, over the last five years, it started to really make sense. And a lot of my decisions today in the last five years have been, who do I want to be around? You know, socially, uh, friends, but in business. Who am I, who do I really want to spend my time with and why and where, where should I be? And our, our industry is the most amazing industry in the world, right? A lot of it's, some of it is antiquated. Right, um, not many things have changed in our industry. Right, the internet changed a lot. Yeah, but that was like however many years, whenever Al Gore invented it. Um, just kidding. But how you know, uh, the internet was a big thing that that changed changed a lot. Uh, but there hasn't been a lot of change since then. You know, now we're getting into AI and stuff. But where was I going with this? You know, a few years ago, I started to make decisions on who do I want to be around, who's doing things more smart, yep. uh, better, yep. and thinking forward rather than just thinking the way it's been for the last 50 years. You went from a real estate salesperson to a real estate entrepreneur. Yeah. You know, and a business entrepreneur. Yeah, sure. Investments, businesses. If you're not spending time around people with big, big visions yep. and big, big goals yep. and doing something about it, then you're standing still. You know, you're not really going forward. You have to surround yourself with people who are thinking differently. When I met you guys, one thing that was clear was I was like, oh my God, like these guys are thinking a little bit different. Like it's not the same old stuff. Like there's this whole other world out there uh, in life and, and in business, you know, in, in real estate, to be real, really specific. There's a whole other world out there. There's so many ways to do things, and there's so many exciting things out there. What we do, you know, helping people buy homes is, is phenomenal, but it is hard. And if you want to do it at a high level for a long time, it's stressful and people burn out, just like a lot of, you know, a lot of jobs, right? But, but this is what we do. So we'll talk about that. You know, you, you do burn out and it does take a lot out of you if you want to provide that service for a long time at a high level. Um, and when you learn that there's other things in this industry, in this business that you can tap into, it's very refreshing and fulfilling. That's the word. Very yep. fulfilling. Do you want to swim in a pond, a lake, or an ocean? That's right. And most of us in our life have swam in ponds because our family tells us it's fun. Then we explore college and we might get into a room and meet some people with different personalities and backgrounds and different interests. And then most people get stuck in corporate America and never leave. Mm -hmm. We have to go seek the people who want to hang in the oceans. Now, those people in the oceans, they drive some people nuts and they come up with some crazy ideas. Crazy ideas, one needs to hit in the right place. Mm -hmm. That's right. Now you're swimming in the ocean, we're hanging in the ocean now, it's a little different. That's right. How do you balance everything? How do you do all this? Because people watching this today are like, how do you balance all this? That's a good question. Um, well, again, I've been doing it a long time, right? So I, I learned how not to balance it for a long time, right? And that, that word balance is, is interesting. I don't know if that's the goal, right? Yep. I don't, I'm not seeking total balance, you know, one third this, one third that, one third this. At different points in my life, yes. Uh, at some points in my life, I want to be heavy in one area and heavy in another area. That's one thing I, I learned from you guys, being around you guys. Um, there is a time to be out of balance, right? And you should be out of balance for a certain amount of time if you want to accomplish your mission yep. on a personal level and business. It's not all about business. It's about family and, and personal as well. You, if you have a mission to accomplish in your family, in your personal life, you need to be out of balance in that direction yep. for as long as it takes. You know, 
and your business may suffer a little bit. Um, I have my day-to-day, -to -day, week-to-week routine. Um, and what it boils down to, if I sum it up in one word, and this is a, a, you know, something I learned over the last few years, it just comes down to discipline. That's the, that's the ingredient. You are very disciplined when it's family time and when it's business time. And one of the smartest things you ever did was focus on those things. Yeah. Right? But like, oh, yeah. you are very disciplined in how to blend those things and how to keep the balance. And I'm with my family on that. Right. You do a very good job of that. And I think a lot of it you struggle with. When to open a door, when to shut the door. Right. Mike said something yesterday that was crazy. One of the best things he said yesterday was, uh, you think you had pressure when you didn't have money? Think about the pressure when you have a whole bunch of people relying on you. That's right. You know, like yeah. today, like him, you know, he wants to open up Keller's and not just focus on the team. He's focusing on both now. The pressure, there's more people relying on you, mm. more people relying That's right. on you, right? <laughs> yeah. I think a lot of times success, people fear that because they fear success has a lot more challenges. Sure. Yeah, it's true. But on the other hand, success is, you know, your definition of success, yep. right? Success is different from, for everyone. Okay. You know, you and I talk to how many realtors on a monthly basis? Hundreds. Yep. Everybody's vision of success is somewhat different. So keep that in mind. You can build it however you want it to look. And I always tell agents, your business has to mirror and match your life. You got to build your business one way to have it output a certain life and, and vice versa. If you are a nine to five realtor who doesn't work on the weekends, who takes four trips a year at minimum seven days, seven to 21 days, that's phenomenal. But your business has to match that, meaning you can't be 100% buyers. You can't be 80% of those 100% buyers, first time buyers, because that'll never work. They'll never match up. That life has to be mirrored by a business that reflects that. You gotta be listings heavy, you gotta be systems and operations heavy, and you gotta be leverage heavy. And then, then what comes out the other side? That life. You, you just want described it. you. Yeah. Yeah. Like listings, leverage, right? Yeah. Scheduled. Hundred percent listings, a certain type of listing, a certain type of client. Uh, and my passion is is leverage these days. Yep. You know, what can be leveraged in a way that it's happening better than if I was hundred percent involved. What's your goal this year? Business, mm -hmm. my personal sales business, a hundred million is my goal. You know, my business will fluctuate from 80 to 120 over the last six years, depending on what's going on, not only in the market, but in my life yeah. uh, and in, in my, in my businesses. What are you on track for now? I'm, I'm probably 20%, uh, I'd say I'm 20% behind where I want to be right now, factoring in a slower than anticipated summer, yeah. some by design, some by not, not anticipating it. Um, but looking, looking ahead, I see a, a good fall market, a really strong, crazy market right now. I'm gonna leave with my favorite question. Yeah. Ready for this? What do you do for fun? What do I do for fun? I like to fish. Okay. The, let's get the obvious answers are yes. Spend time with my family. Spend time with the kids. Spend every second I can with them. I have an eight and twelve year old, um, and my wife, of course. That aside, what what I enjoy is saltwater fishing. You know, down the shore. Go out the shore. Uh, bringing team mostly. So either off the beach, on the boat, off the dock, off the rocks. Um, that's that's kind of my my side passion there. What's your biggest fish you caught? You know, my biggest flounder came last year. I probably had my best flounder season ever last year. Okay. And in one day I caught, um, I think three 20 inches, 20 inch flounders, fat ones too. And then I had a 27 inch monster, which was my personal record. Shark, you ever catch a shark? Plenty of sharks, yeah. Enough. Yeah. Ever get bit? Never got bit, not yet. Uh, what would you say to the group in the audience that even today would like to know a lot about you? Growing up in South Philly, riding your bikes, sneaking in the vet stadium, hard work, versatility, not going to college, learning in the water treatment business from entrepreneurs, learn a lot from mentors through your life, going to Dallas, moving back from Dallas, building your real estate sales business, how you connected with Japan in that story, how you guys have similar backgrounds. Yeah. I mean, your story is unbelievable to where you are today. 
what would you leave the audience with here today and say, listen, if you're watching this, what's what's a piece of key piece of advice I could give you for my life or for real estate or anything like that? Yeah. Well, I'd say this. Success. I'll say happiness doesn't exist on the other side of success. And I think we learned that together um, at family reunion last year. Uh, happiness doesn't exist on the other side of success. And what that means is, or what my interpretation of it is, the brain is an amazing place and the brain keeps moving those goalposts. So once you get what you want, if you're that type of person, which if you have a brain, meaning that everyone seems to be this type of person, when you get what you want, you seem to want something else, yeah. right? So I think the sooner you learn that, the quicker you can enjoy the journey, okay? Wow. If your goal is to make X amount of dollars, when you hit that, I guarantee you're gonna want the next level. And then when you hit that, you're gonna want the next level. Um, so knowing that when you hit that goal, you're not gonna just wake up and be happy and fulfilled. The faster you learn that, the faster you, you enjoy the day-to-day -day grind, yep. right? 100%. And that, that's a, a, a really great lesson to learn early life and I think we've we've learned it early in life I mean yeah. you're what 16 I'm like 25 yeah, exactly. so close. but that's a good one that's <laughs> a good one and yeah. and everything's mindset you know mindset 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 uh, and never stop working on yourself you know I just you like to take care of others and you take care of yourself first yeah a lot of people forget about that they say oh I'm gonna help everybody you gotta help yourself first once you help yourself then you can impact more people if you talk to my family they they think I'm they think I'm crazy in a good way Right. My two things are health and time. Health and time. Health and time. Again, take the obvious thing out of the place. The health of my children and wife and family is paramount, right? Everyone will say that, I hope. Yep. Aside from that, what's my focus on in life every day, every week? It's health and time. That's it, right? And, and if you can master, the, not master, but if you can focus on those two things, Everything else falls into place. Like money falls into place when you yeah. master time. Yeah. And if you can master your health over time, like money's an afterthought, right? Because longevity and, and energy are just, you know, things that you know, people don't talk about much. But without those things, forget it. So I would never have the opportunity to have this conversation with you here most likely and be in the business with them if it wasn't for an entrepreneur and a mindset. And what I've learned from us changing the Keller is, where entrepreneurs thrive. And if you and I were in traditional companies that we were both at before in the past, we would have never connected. We would have known each other, mm -hmm. we would have known our names, right. but we, our lives wouldn't be impacted the way, the way they are. Wealth, health, family, and enjoying the journey, man. Like every time I'm around you and every time I'm around Mike, even in a group, it makes you appreciate who you are mm -hmm. and it makes you excited to how much more we're young. Yeah. Like, what's the next 20 years going to look like? Right. And what's the people that we watch us today? I hope they call Jim and say, hey, I did 200 million. I did 300 million. We want you guys to outpace us, right? We want to be pushed to keep on doing more and more and more, right? That's right. You know, what's the next level of leaders coming and watching us today? So please reach out if you guys want have questions for us or you want to know how's this guy doing 100 million dollars by himself. You want to know what we're doing as a company. That's why we do these things. That's why we just put the time together. I know a lot of stuff. I learn stuff every time interviewing this more and more. There's things today I didn't know about yet. But please reach out. Um, Jeremy Bowers, obviously Jim Onesti. We'll drop our information here. If you guys want to reach out to us, you have any questions. If you're at a brokerage, we're not going to push you to come to Keller Williams. We're going to talk to you about you first. We'd like if you figure out you and you figure out the right fit. Now that Keller Williams, we're not trying to make money. We're here to help. We're here to try to figure out how to get you where you want in life. When you do that, you've been doing that all your life, Jim. And things have came back to you because you focused on them and not you. And that was one yeah. of my big key takeaways today. And every time I meet you, you know that is it's never about a show. It's about another person. So I appreciate it, man. I'm yeah. My life's better with you. Likewise. Likewise, buddy. Right. Cool. Thanks, buddy. Anytime. All right, Joy. Everybody have a good day.